Hey guys, we TMTG here. Uh, yeah, today I've got a deck tech for you, and the deck that I'm going to be covering is Mono Blue Devotion. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this played uh, at the recent Pro Tour, Theros. Uh, yeah, three of the top four decks were actually uh, Mono Blue Devotion, and they're all very similar decks. But uh, today I've got um, my version, which has only got sort of one or two differences. But yeah, we'll just go through that. And uh, hopefully, if you've uh, not got a deck in mind that you want to play, hopefully you can get this together, as it's a really solid deck. So, to start off with, at one drop, we have four copies of Cloudfin Raptor, which is a 0-1 for 1, Flying and Evolve. Uh, we've got four copies of that. Then, also, uh, at one drop, we have... Four copies of Judges Familiar. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 hybrid white and blue flying. You can sacrifice Judges Familiar, counter target instant or sorcery spell, unless its controller pays 1. So if someone uh, mistakenly tap, fully taps out for a Sphinx's Rev or something, and they don't see you got this on the board, then you can just counter it if they haven't got 1 mana open. So yeah, so 4 Judges Familiar. Then I have one copy of uh, Rapid Hybridization, it costs one blue, instant speed, destroy a target creature, it can't be regenerated, that creature's controller puts a 3-3 three, three green frog lizard creature token onto the battlefield. This is good for, um, against like, big stuff like Obsidat in uh, Blood Baron, Desecration Demon, stuff like that that you just want to get rid of and kind of take down a couple of pegs, so one copy of that. Then we have uh, two drops. We've got two copies of Omen Speaker. This is a 1-3 for one generic, one blue. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, scry two. I really like this card, obviously it lets you uh, delve in your deck a little bit, so if you, if you don't want to be drawing lands, or you do want to be drawing lands, or something else then you can kind of just mix around your deck a little bit so gives you some better options so we got two of those also at two drop we have four copies of frostburn weird which is a one four for two hybrid uh, blue or red you can play uh, pay hybrid blue or red and it gets plus one minus one until end of turn this guy is a great blocker like two drop, also two blue symbols for your devotion to blue, which uh, we'll go over. You'll see why in a minute. But yeah, he's a really good blocker, especially against like sort of aggro -y decks. You can just kind of stall them out until you hit your bigger stuff. So four copies of those. Next, we have four copies of Tide by the Mage. This is a two two for two blue. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, tap target red or green creature an opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controls untap step for as long as you control tired by the mage. This is really good at just like, like stalling again against like it's good against mono red. It's good against um, mono green stuff like that. Um, also, I found um, at games that I played against a a rock deck or Golgari deck, and it slows that down quite a bit as well because a lot of the uh, creatures are green black hybrid so yeah four copies of those and again two um, blue symbols for your devotion uh, yep four of those then we have still at two we've got two copies of cyclonic rift um, one generic one blue instant speeds return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand you can also overload it overload it sorry uh, for six generic and one blue and it returns all um, non-land permanents to their owner's hand so yeah this thing if you get hit this late game and they've got a board full of stuff then you can just rip and overload and yeah you you probably should win from there so two of those then moving on to three drops we have four copies of Night Vow Spectre this is a two three for three hybrid blue black Flying, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. You may play cards uh, exiled with Night Vale Spectre. So yeah, this card, before 
Theros, this card, I would say, saw absolutely no play in Constructed. But now this deck's come out, it's absolutely perfect for it. You just, a lot of disruption, taking cards off the top of their deck. Like I was saying to a friend, if they need a land, you swing in with this Exile uh, card, card off the top and it happens to be a land, it just, it kind of just, you get a psychological gain on them as well because they're thinking that it's against them. But uh, yeah, so other than being like swinging in for two damage, you just kind of, setting them back and setting them back so yeah really good card we got four of those and again there's three blue symbols for your devotion which is really really relevant okay they're moving on to some of the kind of bulkier creatures but still in three drop we have four copies of Thassa god of the sea uh, she's a five five for two generic one blue legendary enchantment creature she's indestructible as long as your devotion to blue is less than five, she isn't a creature. So as soon as you've got five um, blue mana symbols on the battlefields, so for example, a Night Vale Spectre and a Frostburn Weird, or a Night Vale Spectre and a, even a Cloudfin Raptor and Thassa herself, then she becomes active. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one, also very relevant. And then this I really like, um, pay one generic, one blue. Target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. I don't really need to explain too much more on this card. This card's just really, really, really good. So we've got four of those. For three as well, it's in insane. It is, I would say it is the best card in the deck. If anyone would like to disagree, then <laughs> feel free to, but I, I, I disagree. So next we have four drops. We have... One copy of Jace Architect of Thought. He's uh, two generic, two blue, for anything. Uh, I'm not going to read out all his abilities, but I, well, I actually I will do. Uh, plus one um, until your next turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls uh, controls attacks, it gets minus one, minus zero oh until end of turn. Minus two. Reveal the top three cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other on the bottom of your library in any order. So that's like that's the the key kind of ability that you're looking to do because you're looking to delve into your deck, pull cards out that you want, and uh, yeah, so not you won't often hit this minus eight because yeah, you just really you're going for the minus two option here. But anyway, minus eight for each player. Search that player's library for a non-land card and exile it. Then that player shuffles his or her library. You may cast those cards without paying their minor cost. Again, if you can get it off and they got some big stuff in their deck. Brilliant. I had someone do it to me when I was playing um, uh, a black greenish deck with Garrickon's uh, World Spine Worm, and they actually fished out a World Spine Worm against me with this minus eight and killed me with it. So, can work. Just hopefully not against yourself. <laughs> so, we got one Jace. Then we have, and this is the key cards to the deck as well. We have uh, at four drop four copies of Master of Waves. This guy, a week ago or two weeks ago before uh, the Pro Tour, when he was at sort of $4, I was absolutely hyping him up. Everyone was telling me he's a bad card. I managed to get my hands on five. Pro Tour came around, they shut up to $25. So, yeah, I think that's a win for me. <laughs> anyway, he's a 2-1 for three generic, one blue. He has protection from red, which is very relevant. Elemental creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And also, when Master of Waves enters the battlefield, put a number of one o oh, um, of one zero blue elemental creature tokens onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to blue. This is where the the double and the triple uh, blue minor symbols kick in big time. Uh, I think my record of amount of um, tokens on the battlefield at one point was. It was like 27 at the moment. That was, yeah, that was at Games Day the other day. I had, I ended up with three Master of the Waves, 27, three, no, four, three tokens. It was just like, no, three, two, sorry. No, it would be four, three. My bad. Sorry, my brain just went um, <clears throat> messed up there. But yeah, I ended up with 27, four, three tokens. And then as soon as they see sort of one or two of these, they usually scoop. But three, it's kind of like, okay, fair play move on so we got four copies of those it's probably the most pivotal card in the deck so yeah four of those then we have at four mana still 
we have two copies of Bident of Thassa. It costs uh, two generic, two blue. It's a legendary artifact, uh, enchantment artifact. <clears throat> Again, you've got those uh, double blue symbols. Uh, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Again, brilliant because you're fishing through your deck, thinning it out, getting what you need to get. And uh, yeah. And then you've got one generic, one blue, and tap the, uh, the Biden. Creatures your opponent control attack each turn, uh, this turn if able. I don't, I'll be honest, I haven't used that ability yet with this card. I've been mainly using it just for the double blue symbol and also the card draw. Because as you can see, there's a few flyers in here. If they're swinging in over the top, you draw it, you may be drawing two, three cards a turn, which is just it's insane. So we've got two of those. And uh, yeah, finally, we're going to move on to the, <clears throat> the minor base. So we have three copies of Mutavolt. Uh, it's a land, like I just said. Uh, you can tap to add one generic to your minor pool, or you can pay one. Mutavolt becomes a 2-2 creature with all creature types until end of turn. It's still a land. Such a good card this yeah and the price reflects that it'll probably so i think it, i believe it's about 25 dollars now that's for a rare that's insane amount so yeah brilliant card and then uh as far as the rest of the minor base goes we've just got 21 plain old islands so we've got 21 of those right <clears throat> now as far as sideboard goes mine's a little bit different for two reasons one I couldn't afford three more Jace Architects of Four. <laughs> Just got the one, so I've had to put different things in. But also, I like maybe I like to make my own kind of changes in sideboards rather than just playing what I read on the internet. So, sideboard we have two copies of Jace Memory Adept. We'll just quickly skim over these, or Anime Jace as I call him. Uh, we have two copies of Dissolve, which is. Uh, an instant counter target spell, Scry 1. Uh, really good. One copy of Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. <clears throat> this, I did have main board for a while. Um, but I did take it out because I, f I found the only thing I was using it for is just primarily if I wanted to hit the overload cost. <clears throat> excuse me. If I wanted to hit the overload cost on Cyclonic Rift, which was quite often, but I mean... Other than that, it's just used to kind of sort of throw your hand down on the table and play everything and just go like balls to the wall. But yeah, one of those. Then we've got two Ratchet Bombs. This is for anything that's going to generate tokens like this deck. So you sideboard-wise, if you're playing against this deck, you want to be playing two of these in your sideboard because you can just play it for two, crack it straight away, destroy all the tokens because they're obviously they don't have a minor cost, so you just kill them. Same for if you're playing against Elspeth decks, stuff like that. Things that are just going to make a lot of tokens fast and they're going to dominate the board. Ratchet Bomb's going to deal with that. <clears throat> two of those. And then we got two more uh, Rapid Hybridizations. Uh, we have two Gainsays, which costs uh, one generic, one blue, counter target blue spell. Again, bring this in against um, this deck, blue white control. So you can cast things like Sphinx's Revs, uh, Supreme Verd. Oh no, Supreme Verd, you can't be count, sorry. But yeah, like Supreme um, Sphinx's Revelation, stuff like that. Uh, then one Triton Tactics. Nope, two Triton Tactics, sorry. Yeah, this is good if you're playing against just like... If you want to get like two for ones, if you want your, like, your creatures to survive, kill off their creatures, and so on. It's, it's, it is, it's a decent card. Um, then we have two copies of Negate, counter-target non-creature spell. So as you can see, it's built like a lot of counter... Excuse me, sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, so my throat's a bit messed up. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of kind of counter spells, a lot of disruption. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So um, I do have two Theros booster box... Um, openings to put up on the channel i'm trying to get a bit more content out as i've been slacking recently been busy going back to college etc etc but yeah i've got a few more videos to put up and uh yeah thanks for watching please uh, like comment and subscribe see you guys